Hello and welcome to Shredder Zoo. Today we are at the zoo's stables to talk more about the Equus. First of all, Equus is the name given to all living members of the horse family. Domesticated about 3,000 years ago, the horse had a profound impact on human history in areas such as migration, farming, warfare, sport, communication and travel. Species of Equus lived from 5 million years ago until the present. Living species include horses, asses and zebras. Fossils of Equus are found on every continent except Australia and Antarctica. The fossil record for horses and their ancestors is well represented and is one of the few animals we have a fairly complete evolutionary record of. The horse belongs to the order Parasodactyla, that means the odd toed ungulates, the members of which all share hooved feet and an odd number of toes on each foot, as well as mobile upper lips and a similar tooth structure. This means that the horses share a common ancestry with tapirs and rhinoceroses. The oldest known fossils assigned to the Equidae date from the early Eocene 54 million years ago and belong to the Hyracotherium, previously known as the Eohippus. These early Equidae were fox-sized animals with three toes on the hind feet and four on the front feet. They were herbivorous browsers eating relatively soft plants, not grasses, and already adapted for running. The complexity of their brains suggests that they were already were alert and intelligent animals. These animals are considered to have occupied the same ecological niche as a small forest deer today. Changing climatic conditions around 32 to 24 million years ago gradually saw a reduction of forests and an increase of grasslands. The horse ancestors were able to take advantage of the new environments, gradually switching their diet from foliage to grass. They grew longer legs, enabling them to run faster to evade predators and to cover longer distances over the grasslands. At this time, the Mesohippus arose. Aside from having longer legs, Mesohippus only had three toes in contact with the ground rather than the four seen in Hyracotherium. The centre toe was the main weight-bearing appendage, and overall the construction of the foot and larger size reveals that Mesohippus would be the faster horse, an adaption it needed to outrun its main predator, the Hyenodon. Fast forward to the early to mid Miocene epoch, around 20 to 10 million years ago, and we find the Merychippus. Merychippus marks the continuing shift in horses towards being able to cope with the emerging plains dominated environment of the Miocene North America, a change that began at the end of the Eocene period. Aside from the changing landscape, this change towards a faster running body was also driven by the appearance of faster running predators like Amphicycon and Epicycon, which were considerably better adapted than earlier predators like Hyenodon. This represents one aspect of an evolutionary arms race where predators have to adapt to catch faster prey, which in turn has to adapt to run even faster to escape the faster predators. Whereas the earlier forms, such as Hyracotherium and Mesohippus, had more than one weight-bearing toe, Merychippus supported its body weight with feet that ended with a single, well-adapted toe that ended in a hoof. Two toes were still present upon either side of this enlarged toe, but they were already reduced to the point of being vestigial, that's present but not fulfilling any purpose. And in modern horses, these cannot be seen at all. The teeth of Merychippus had also developed to better cope with eating grass. This in turn led to a more developed jaw and a more horse-like face. The neck had also elongated, better able to reach the ground to feed. Next on our brief history of the evolution of the horse is the Pliohippus, arising around 12 million years ago and continuing on until the early Pleistocene around 2.5 million years ago. The most noted feature of Pliohippus is that it has even more developed hoof feet supported by the middle toe with the two side toes being reduced so much that in life they would have been barely visible, if at all. It is still under debate, however, as to how close Pliohippus was to modern horses that come under the Equus genus. Pliohippus was certainly ancestral, but first may have given rise to other forms, such as Astrohippus or Dinohippus, which are in turn thought to be more closely related to modern forms due to their even greater similarity. It must be pointed out at this point that the evolution of the horse was not a simple straight line with one of the previous species evolving into the next. 
There were many more species that branched off from those I mentioned, and indeed some of these species would have lived alongside each other for thousands if not millions of years. For example, the last of the early horses I want to mention today is a Hyperion. Hyperion appeared at the start of the Miocene period and continued to thrive until well into the mid Pleistocene, surviving for some 22 million years. In the space of this time, Hyperion colonised most of the major continents with the exception of Antarctica, Australia and South America. Despite its success after the Miocene, Hyperion was living in a world that saw the emergence of more advanced horses, all the way up to the point where the modern forms began to appear. These new forms, as well as other new grazing animals such as mammoths, would have meant increased competition for the same resources that Hyperion used. All the previous species of horse became extinct. Only the modern Equus survives. This species arose around 5 million years ago. Digs in Western Canada have unearthed clear evidence horses existed in North America until about 12,000 years ago. However, all Equidae in North America ultimately became extinct. The causes of this extinction, simultaneous with the extinctions of a variety of other American megafauna, have been a matter of debate. Given the suddenness of the event, and because these animals had been flourishing for millions of years previously, something quite unusual must have happened. The first main hypothesis attributes extinction to climate change. For example, in Alaska, beginning approximately 12,500 years ago, the grasses characteristic of the steppe ecosystem gave way to shrub tundra, which was covered with unpalatable plants. The other hypothesis suggests extinction was linked to the over-exploitation by newly arrived humans of native prey that were not habituated to the hunting methods. The extinctions were roughly simultaneous with the end of the most recent glacial advance and the appearance of big game hunting Clovis culture. Horses only returned to the Americas with Christopher Columbus in 1493. Subsequent explorers brought ever larger numbers, some from Spain and others from breeding establishments set up by the Spanish in the Caribbean. Later, as Spanish missions were founded on the mainland, horses would eventually be lost or stolen and proliferated into large herds of feral horses that became known as Mustangs. While the domestic horse and donkey, along with their feral descendants, exist worldwide today, wild equine populations are limited to Africa and Asia. Human activities have threatened wild equine populations and out of the seven living species, only the plain zebra remains widespread and abundant. Well, that's all I have for you this week. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and you've learned something new. If you did, please let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. And I hope to see you next time here at Shredder Zoo. Goodbye.